Go ahead and fill in your energy chart as I go through this PowerPoint. You will need to pause periodically as I'm going to go through it more quickly than um, you can write. The first energy source is coal. You need to know that it is non-renewable. So next to the word coal on your chart, you need to write non-renewable next to it. It's used for electricity and for industry. So electricity in power plants, in industry to run machines. How is power generated? Coal is burned, the water boils, steam spins turbines, generators release electrons. That's the basics. We've been over this in diagrams and little videos, so um, you should know how power is generated at this point. The environmental problems with coal is industrial smog, and you review for the AP test the uh, main components of industrial smog are particulate matter, SO2, and carbon monoxide. Another environmental problem is acid rain and mercury is released. And remember with mercury, you have bioaccumulation and biomagnification going up the food chains into your top predatory fish. So remember that, which we have learned in the past. And then it releases carbon dioxide causing global warming. So our human health problems for coal is air pollution, which causes respiratory problems such as asthma. So when I imported this into the program I'm using to record, it took away my arrow. So there's supposed to be an arrow here. And um, so air pollution leads to respiratory problems such as asthma. Mercury in tuna, remember, um, through the bioaccumulation and biomagnification up the food chain, you end up with mercury in the ocean in your top predatory fish like tuna and swordfish and shark. Mining coal gives black lung disease. So the miners have that problem. So what are the main countries for coal? The United States has 300 years of reserves for coal. We have... The, it's the most abundant fossil fuel in reserves, not the most abundantly used um, energy source. It's the most abundantly used electricity source, but the most abundant energy source is oil. Uh, we have the most coal of all fossil fuels in our reserves in the world. Um, China has a lot of coal and so, do, so does Russia. Going on to petroleum and crude oil. So don't forget to mark non-renewable for this one as well. So this is the second fossil fuel. So sometimes we call it petroleum oil. Sometimes we call it crude oil. But we have forms of petroleum that aren't um, in uh, the crude oil form. So like carrageen that comes from oil shale or bitumen that comes from Canadian tar sands. Those are all forms of petroleum as well. So the main thing that we use petroleum in the world is for transportation. So transportation uses the most, um, the highest percentage of the oil. We make plastics, which I believe is about 10% of our oil is turned into plastic. And then some electricity, not much. And some places like Saudi Arabia where they have tons of oil, They'll use that in power plants, but it's really not a very good power plant um, fuel. Um, we use it more for transportation and use the other things like coal for power plants because um, we can't really use coal in cars. How is power generated? An internal combustion engine, so know that term, um, in our cars, trucks, trains, etc. Our environmental problems, so habitat fragmentation in roads to our drilling sites. So we have to have roads that go to all of these pumps, and that can cause habitat fragmentation. And then photochemical smog. Um, don't forget that you need to know for the AP test as well what 
um, are the components of photochemical smog. So photochemical smog are, are NOx mainly, um, particulate matter, and um, ozone are our three main components of photochemical smog. The health problems, again, are mainly respiratory problems such as asthma. So those are the main health problems with petroleum. So which countries are notable? Well, the United States uses the most petroleum oil because we're the wealthiest and we have the most cars. And so I showed you that in the picture up here. There, um, in terms of reserves, so the countries that have the most reserves of oil are Venezuela, Saudi Arabia, and Canada. And Canada used to not be on this list, but since they've developed the technology to get petroleum out of tar sands, they're now considered a leader in reserves of petroleum. Um, so the U.S., Russia, and Saudi Arabia produce, which means we pump or extract the most. And these numbers change per year. Um, it depends on the markets and who's pumping more and flooding the markets and how the price goes down. And um, so it, it's somewhat politics, international politics, but you just need to know those are the three main countries that produce the most oil. All right, going on to natural gas. Again, mark on natural gas that it is a non-renewable resource. It is used mainly for cooking, heating, electricity, and a little bit for transportation. So we do have some natural gas cars, but that's not its main use. The main use is going to be cooking in your house. And I have a picture here of these burners showing you that a lot of people have gas powered ovens and stoves. Um, in our homes, a lot of us have a gas heater, um, and then we burn a lot of it to produce electricity. In California, we do make a lot of our electricity from natural gas, and around the country, it's replacing coal for a lot of natural gas, um, for a lot of electricity. It's still not the leader in electricity. Coal is still the leader, but it's over time, it's replacing more and more. And that's because of the technology of fracking. We now have the ability to extract more natural gas and it's made it cheaper and more um, readily available. And then we also know that it's the cleanest fossil fuel, so it's better for the environment and health if we burn that instead of coal for electricity. So same thing, um, we burn the natural gas, we boil water, steam spins a turbine, um, the turbine releases electrons and generators. And then combustion means lighting it on fire at home um, or in a car. An internal combustion engine can run on natural gas. Um, there's not that many of them out there, but they do exist more as experimental prototypes. Some environmental problems. Pipelines can explode. That does happen sometimes in the U.S. There's some carbon dioxide, not as much as the other two fossil fuels. And then fracking can contaminate aquifers. Oh, add on there earthquakes. I forgot to have that on here too. So, and earthquakes for um, fracking. The human health problems is that it produces a toxic gas, but we can manage that pretty well in our homes and it doesn't usually cause issues. So which countries, you just need to know the leader in natural gas is U.S. and Russia. We sort of flip-flop between the leader in production and consumption. So one year, the U.S. might be leading in production, and the next year, Russia's leading in production. So you just need to know that the U.S. and Russia are the leaders in natural gas. Here's a couple things that you need to add on to your chart somewhere. You need to know it is the cleanest fossil fuel and it is replacing coal in a, in a lot of the U.S. for electricity. Again, it's still not the leader. Coal is still king for electricity, but natural gas is over time replacing this. Going on to hydroelectric, um, sometimes it's called hydropower. 
It is renewable if there's enough rain. So it is always renewable. Our rivers will eventually come back, but from year to year, it kind of depends on drought situations, whether or not you have enough water in the reservoir behind the dam. Um, all right, so hydroelectric is used for electricity and water storage. So if we dam a river and we make a lake, a water reservoir, not only do we have the ability to um, let it go through the um, dam like this to produce electricity to spin turbines and dams but we also now have saved a lot of this water that we can use for drinking or for agriculture so the turbines are here inside the dam they spin um, same thing once the turbines spin then um, the electrons are released in generators the environmental problems with hydroelectric is that you do lose a lot of water due to evaporation. So um, it sits there behind the dam and it evaporates. We have habitat alteration. So we go from a river habitat into a dam habitat. And so your river species are going to decline, but your lake species can um, thrive. And then we have sediment buildup behind the dam. So up here behind the dam, we have sediments. So rivers normally take sediments downstream. And these sediments are really good for building wetlands, for bringing nutrients for our farmland. Um, and so we block that. And then we have to dredge out those sediments from behind the dam. Our human health problems. So in tropical countries, not in ours, but in tropical countries, um, the water can breed mosquitoes. Um, and so that's a health problem. That's about it though. So what countries? So the highest percentage of their own electricity is in Norway. Canada produces the most megawatts of power. They're a bigger country than Norway. So their megawatts that they produce is, is, makes up a less of a percentage of their own electricity than Norway. And then you need to know that China right here has the largest dam. You need to know that this is the Three Gorges Dam. And China is the largest dam in the world. Now, the good part of hydroelectric is no air pollution, no greenhouse gases. So that is a nice renewable um, energy source. The next one here is nuclear. Make sure you also know it's non-renewable. So we use uranium and uranium is a metal that is non-renewable. So we use it for electricity and power plants. We create nuclear weapons and it also powers naval ships. So it used to be our old submarines and our old aircraft carriers and destroyers would have to re fuel every few days with diesel. Um, now they don't. They can go for a year or two running just on nuclear power. Um, so it's uh, an advantage militarily. Power is generated through nuclear fission and you need to know that the fuel is uranium-235. So that's the specific isotope that's in nuclear power plants. So same as coal. So in other words, we don't burn the uranium, but we start a chain reaction where we break the atom apart. It's called nuclear fission to break it apart. And then that creates a positive feedback loop for a chain reaction to then uh, the neutrons bombard another atom, which splits it apart. And every time the atom splits, splits apart, it releases heat and energy, which we use that heat to boil water, which turns uh, the turbines, the steam spins turbines, and then releases electrons in generators. Our main environmental pro problems are accidents. So there's been three in the world, Three Mile Island, Chernobyl, and Fukushima. We went over those already. Disposal of spent fuel rods. So what do we do with these fuel rods when we're done with them and we can't use them anymore? They are still radioactive. So what do we do with them? We don't know. We don't have a good solution for that. Currently, they're being stored at each nuclear reactor site. There is some longer term um, Nuclear weapons are stored in uh, what's called WIPP, um, uh, 
And then our longer term in Yucca Mountain is not really happening and it probably won't really happen. Okay, um, so currently there's no nuclear waste at, at Yucca Mountain, so you need to know that as well. It creates thermal pollution. Any kind of power plant that cools down their water um, can create thermal pollution, not just nuclear. All right, so our human health problems. So um, my arrows did not come through when I put it in this program. So accidents, you want a little arrow here, leads to radiation, which leads to thyroid cancer. Um, it could also lead to leukemia, birth defects, or radiation poisoning. You need to specifically know the word thyroid cancer. So on an AP test, if you're going to write about the health problems of nuclear energy with accidents, make sure you specifically write thyroid cancer, not just cancer. All right, so which countries? France is a leader in nuclear power. It produces about 70% of their own electricity comes from nuclear. The United States produces the most megawatts of power, but because we're a bigger country, our megawatts from nuclear is about 20% of our energy. Um, France, For France, it's about 70% of their energy. So here's the good parts of nuclear. It produces no emissions of air pollution, no emissions of greenhouse gases. So that's a positive, a pro of nuclear power. Biomass. So biomass is renewable, but you have to give it time to grow. So it might be a few months for it to grow, like for corn or wheat, or 20 years for a pine tree to grow back. So whatever it is, it has to grow back, but it is renewable. So biomass is basically growing plants or algae to be used to for energy. So how do we use it? Well, you can cook with things. You can heat your home with wood. You can turn corn or um, sugar cane into ethanol for cars. Um, in some places they burn trash for electricity and most of our trash is paper. So paper comes from trees, so it's biomass. So how is power generated? Combustion, we light it on fire for cooking and heating with wood or other plant products. Um, turbines for electricity, if we're gonna burn trash, we're just gonna burn that like instead of coal. And then combustion engine for ethanol. Our problems with renewable is that it can cause deforestation in places. Um, now, if they're just cutting down trees, then that's deforestation anywhere. So that can happen in any country. Um, if you're cutting down trees to grow sugar cane to turn it into ethanol like they do in Brazil, that's that would be a different type of deforestation. You're clearing the trees so that you can grow crops. But in a lot of places like Africa and Latin America and parts of Asia, they're cutting down the trees so they can cook their food or heat their homes. The main air pollution from burning trees or ethanol or whatever is particulate matter, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide. To grow things, we're not talking about a forest, but if you grow corn for ethanol or sugarcane for ethanol, then you're going to have to fertilize and you're going to have to spray pesticides. Remember, fertilizers and pesticides are completely different things. Do not use them interchangeably on an AP test FRQ. Our human health problems with biomass, we have air pollution, which leads to respiratory problems such as asthma. Which countries? Well, developing countries mainly use wood for cooking. In the United States, we do have people that use wood for cooking, um, mainly to heat their homes. A lot of people like in Alaska, or if you live in a rural part of Wyoming or Montana, you might have a wood burning stove, um, uh, wood burning, uh, sorry, heater in your basement and you put wood in every day and it heats your house, but that's very uncommon. So the majority of our biomass in the US is growing corn to make ethanol. And then in Brazil, you need to know that they use sugarcane to produce ethanol. 
The next one is solar. So we have passive and active. Solar is renewable. Every day the sun comes back. So we use solar for heating our homes for, um, well, sorry, passive and active is used for heating and cooking. So how is power generated? Direct heat. And so this is how you structure your house. Um, you have south facing windows towards the equator where you get more sun to heat your house. And, um, and then up above you have overhangs for the summer sun to shade the house. So passive is a home building design like south facing windows here. And we've discussed this in our energy diagrams and our notes, what the components of passive solar is. And then active solar uses solar collectors on the roof, not solar panels, solar collectors. They can collect water, they can collect air and then use a pump to move the heat through the house. So the reason why it's called active is because of the pump uses energy to distribute that heat. So a solar water heater is a good example of active solar. Again, not solar panels, not photovoltaic cells which are solar panels. No environmental problems with this one. Also, no health problems with this. And solar passive design has been used for centuries in home design. So people have known this for many, many years and have designed homes to maximize heating the house in the winter. This up here is actually active solar. So you have solar collectors on your roof for air or for water and a pump to, here's your pump, sorry, to um, pump. And that's why it's called active because of the pump. The next type of solar is your photovoltaic cells, which I abbreviated here as PV, and then concentrating solar rays. All of this is renewable. So here's your solar panels here. People call them solar panels. The AP test used to only call them by their proper name, which was photovoltaic cells. More recently, they're using the nickname of solar panels. Okay, so how is power generated in photovoltaics? Um, it's the electrons which are embedded in the silicons that get activated. In concentrating the sun's rays, um, they're mirrors with parabolic troughs to a tower with water and steam spins turbines. Environmental problems. When you make photovoltaic cells, it makes toxins in the factories that they have to dispose of. And then in the desert, it can kill birds. So those mirrors that concentrate rays towards a tower it can heat up to 750 Fahrenheit, which is really, really hot. And if birds fly through that path, they get instantly zapped and killed. Here's a picture down here of what I'm talking about. So between California and Las Vegas on that road, there's several of these that you can see on the highway driving that way. Um, so these are all mirrors that focus on the tower right here. And in the tower, they have either some sort of liquid, it could be water or some other liquid that then um, heats up steam spins turbines. All right, health problems, none. Which country solar ray farms like this are worldwide? The largest of these are in Morocco and India. The next source of energy is wind. Wind is renewable. It's used for electricity. Historically, it was used to grind grain. You don't really need to know that for the AP test. How is power generated? Well, wind spins the turbines. So basically the blades are the turbines. Environmental problems, birds and bats hit the blades. Um, this is a problem. First, a lot of them are endangered species, not all of them. Um, bats cannot echolocate around the blades at night. Their echolocation sort of, it, it just can't do a good job echolocating. And remember bats provide huge amounts of ecosystem services um, and they're in trouble due to white fungus disease, white nose syndrome, which is a fungus. Um, but remember the ecosystem services they provide for humans. Remember an ecosystem service is something 
that nature gives to humans for money or survival. Bats eat huge amounts of bugs and they save farmers millions of dollars every year in avoiding having to spray pesticides. And then they also eat a lot of mosquitoes, which can bring diseases to humans. So bats provide humans with a lot of ecosystem services. There are no human health problems with wind. So countries, historically, it's Denmark. You might remember that from a kid when you studied Denmark and they have a lot of windmills. The most megawatts of power is actually produced in China. But Germany is a leader in research and technology for a lot of renewables, including wind power. All right, the next one, we have ocean power, which is renewable. It's used for electricity. And the force of the water spins the turbines for waves and tides. And so either wave power or tidal tides coming in or out will spin these turbines you actually don't need to know this. This is not something that's on the AP test anymore. So don't write about OTEC. So I will cross that one out. Um, so an environmental problem is disruption of the marine habitat. Um, so if you've got migrating turtles trying to get by the, the, um, the turbines, that can be a problem or fish swimming by them or Anchoring them in the bottom can disrupt the benthic habitat. Remember, benthic means bottom habitat. There are no human health problems with any of these. And there is no country leading the world in um, ocean power. Um, there's a lot of experimental lines. So they are generating power in certain places. Um, they're it's more experimental at this point. Okay, so geothermal is renewable if groundwater is not depleted. So as long as you keep your aquifers up to a certain level, it's fine. So geothermal is where the magma gets really close to your aquifers and it naturally heats up that water. It's used for heating and for electricity. In some parts of Paris, they pump that hot water directly through pipes in their walls to heat their homes. In Iceland, they use a lot of it to generate electricity, which you can see there's a power plant in Iceland for geothermal. So the hot water from the aquifers is pumped in pipes for heat or the steam from the aquifers spins turbines. And then we're gonna talk about the ground pump um, heat source actually next. So you actually don't need to write this one right now. You can write that one in a minute. Our environmental problems are groundwater depletion and corrosive chemicals. And just to explain the corrosive chemicals come naturally from minerals found in um, aquifers. And um, so underground hot springs naturally produce sulfur, so H2S. Um, hydrogen sulfide gas. So it's not SO2. So coal is SO2. And you got to know the difference. Geothermal is H2S. So make sure you know the difference between those two. Um, so we can get rid of this sulfur, very similar to how we get rid of SO2 with coal with scrubbers on power plants. And then Iceland is the leader for geothermal power. So now let's talk about ground source heat pump, which is a type of geothermal. So there's a picture right here that shows you what it looks like. So the ground has a constant temperature year round and you can use that for um, your home. So you basically pump air or water, it's usually air, underwater, underground. And if it's hot out, like in the summer, the ground will cool the air and then you bring it back up into your house. And if it's winter, the cold air goes under, it gets warmed up by the ground, and then you pump that warmer air into your house. So basically your home stays ground temperature year round, which is a constant about like 70 degrees in California.
And so it uses a pump. So you lay all these pipes underground and then you pump air in and out and makes your home a constant 70 degrees. Environmental problems, sometimes they can be a little bit noisy, but that's about it. Not too bad. There are no human health problems with ground source heat pumps and many developed countries are starting to use these more and more. All right, the next one is hydrogen. So hydrogen is not renewable so far because we don't have the ability to make all the hydrogen we would need. If we were gonna switch to all hydrogen cars, we don't have enough energy to make that hydrogen without using fossil fuels and fossil fuels are non-renewable. So if we can split enough water to make hydrogen gas using renewable energy, then hydrogen can be renewable. Okay, so it's a fuel cell is what is in the cars or buses or whatever. Um, so electrolysis of water makes our hydrogen gas. And so we burn the hydrogen gas. Currently, to make all this hydrogen for hydrogen cars, which really are more prototypes right now by the car companies or universities, um, hydrogen power cars exist. But currently, to get all that hydrogen gas, we have to use fossil fuels to split it. No uh, human health problems. Um, again, it's experimental. Um, scientists are trying to figure out, well, what can, what else can produce hydrogen gas? So they're genetically engineering algae to produce hydrogen gas. Right now it's very costly to do that. So they have to figure out ways to make that price come down to compete with oil. Um, and so these are the things that people are working on with hydrogen power. The nice thing about hydrogen is that it doesn't produce any greenhouse gases, no air pollution. And so if we can figure out how to use this technology and then get every gas station in America to carry the hydrogen gas, which is a big infrastructure challenge as well, um, then it's a, a good solution. All right, that's it for your energy charts.